really for me, it probably was uh, uh, Karl Barth and wrestling through the church dogmatics. Um, and uh, Barth's was an influence that I didn't engage early on. Uh, I had actually made it all the way through uh, most of my undergraduate and uh, graduate training without engaging uh, Barth in any significant manner. Uh, it wasn't really until I moved on into my own doctoral studies. Um, and uh, at that time, I already knew that I wanted to wrestle with uh, theological anthropology and specifically the relationship between Christology and anthropology. Uh, and my real question with that from the beginning has always been, what exactly does it mean to say that Jesus Christ somehow reveals what it means to be truly human? Uh, and I became frustrated early on bumping into these claims in various books. <clears throat> where I felt like they would just say that Jesus reveals what it means to be human. And then I would read much of the rest of the book and, and, and not feel like actually Christology made much of a difference in, in what they said about anthropology. Uh, and if anything, I felt like the logic tended to go the other way. Uh, we tended to understand first what it means to be human and then deal with the, the incarnation uh, and wrestle with, well, if this is what it means to be human, then how do we understand the incarnation and how do these dynamics work and whatnot? Uh, and, and there may be room for that logic, but I felt like the other logic was missing. Uh, uh, and if this is Jesus, what does it mean to be human? Maybe not entirely missing, but not developed as thoroughly or as consistently as um, it seemed like we might be able to do. So as I was moving into my doctoral work, that was the question that I really had in mind, and, and how do we go about doing this? So I started kind of casting around for conversation partners. Who, who's gonna help me develop this question and explore this uh, a little bit more robustly? And uh, it's probably not surprising that I quickly landed on Karl Barth as a conversation partner for that. Uh, in his uh, Church Dogmatics, uh, he does that very intentionally as an entire volume, where really the only thing that he does is he takes a particular issue in anthropology and moves from Christology to anthropology and tries to unpack exactly how that will work. And that ended up being kind of my entree into uh, uh, Karl Barth. Um, and in the process, um, I, I was influenced by the idea of having a, a theological um, really just an approach to theology that is shaped uh, in a fairly robust way by Christology. Um, so not just theological anthropology, but other uh, theological issues. And what does it mean uh, to, to take seriously not just the claim that Jesus reveals what it means to be human, but that Jesus is the, really the pinnacle of, of God's self-revelation, that, that God gives himself in Jesus. Uh, and if that's kind of the, the crowning statement that we make about um, uh, God revealing himself, then just how does that reorient our conversation? Uh, how does that uh, shift our understanding of who God is, uh, what God has been about doing in the world, what the world is, um, how God saves us, right? It just shapes all of those conversations in different ways. Um, and I'll be honest enough to say that one of the reasons I like uh, Karl Barth and have been shaped by him as a dialogue partner is because I don't always agree with him. Uh, and my favorite thinkers are ones that are going to do things differently enough that uh, they'll push up against my understanding. Uh, they'll make me think differently about things that I have to wonder, all right, here's a smart guy who's saying things that don't sound smart to me. So how do I wrestle with that and figure that out? Uh, and uh, sometimes that stretches and reshapes and remolds how I'm doing things. Actually, it almost always does that. At the end of the day, sometimes I end up saying, you know, uh, I still don't think this is the right way to do it, uh, but I've been changed in the conversation, in the dialogue, uh, in important ways. So I always like to say with, with, uh, with Bart, one of my favorite things is that when he's wrong, he's at least interestingly wrong. And I find that to be valuable, and it's why he's been an important influence for me.